Hi, it's Brian here. I thought what I could do is just take a closer look um, at the Procreate 4.1 update. And I'm looking at the um, drawing guide. And I want to show you something. If I go to symmetrical, for example, we just split it into two. And I'm going to leave this one off, otherwise I'll show you why. If I draw a circle, you see how it's matching there. But if I go back in there and I, I click this one now, because I'm using the, the split screen, and I'll do the same thing again. There, you see how it's down here now. So let me put that back because I want to show you something really good. Okay, I want to show you why you would want to move this line. So let me just go in here just for a second. We'll just do a, I don't know, a quick, a quick flower or something. And it's quite good because I only have to need to draw half a flower. And we put some detail in now, I suppose. Right. So we have a flower. But let's say we want to do one over here and we, we just want to, you know, just do the half or whatever. What we can do is we can come back in here, go in here, and we can rotate the line like that. <clears throat> Oops. My screen has been playing up lately, so, and I think it's either my fingers or my pads really having problems. So now if I draw here, around that guideline, you can see now it's happening over here. Can be quite handy, I suppose, for whatever project you're doing. But let me show you a consequence. Now if I draw down here, so around here, see the circle there? But look what's happened up here. It's right next to that flower. So you actually run a risk of going over your flower. Yeah? So you need to bear that in mind. Um, another cool thing you can do, which I discovered, could be quite handy, is you can grab this center point here and move the whole thing around. So maybe we just want to do something down here. And there's the line. So I'll come in here, draw a line, like so. So this, it's got quite a lot of, um, what's the word? Possibilities. It's really down to your imagination how you're going to use the tool. Really, I think it's quite good. I'm quite impressed. And there you go. Now, if I go back in here, and I want to put this line back in the center. And I have tried pressing the screen to see if it can snap. I haven't yet found out if it can snap at, at, at all. But if I do that, and then I just try and get it into a 90 degree angle like so you see that it's not I don't know if if you can oh what happened there I did undo oh. let's put it back I want it in the center I haven't worked out about snapping I can't see any options for it I've tried multiple different ways of clicking um, but I do want it back sort of in the center of the page. Now, I wonder if I bring that in. This doesn't really help much. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Another good one is this one. Oh, look, that put it back, didn't it? Changing it. Anyway, this one is quite good. It's like a square. Because you can draw up here, say, draw in here. It's quite good. So you've got more more power, more scope, more more places to draw, and it you know just duplicates. But you see, like these flowers which we did earlier, um, you do run risk still of. Um, I can't get there. There you go. Look, 
of drawing over the flower. So that, I suppose, can't be helped. <coughs> so I suppose you'd have to think about your background, foreground and whatever, when you're doing stuff like this, I suppose. So it's worth thinking about. Now, if I go back in here and turn that on, let's see what happens. I'll go in the corner, go here. There you go, it's doing it down here, but not here. If I do it there, <coughs> excuse me. Oh. So it's working outwards. It's quite interesting. So really, it's just a case of playing with it, playing around with the software, which is what I've been doing really since the update came out. And uh, it's very impressive, very impressive. Now, let me just um, go back in here, and I want to actually let's get out of there. Let's um, turn that. Go back in there, turn that off for a minute. And I want to fill some circles up because I want to show you something else. Oops, I knew that was going to happen. Undo. Uh, all right, let's let's do it in this circle. Ugh. Undo. What's, what's going on? Let's close that off. Right. Um, let's draw another circle here. Right, let's go into this one here and go into Liquify. And you've got Push, which I think I showed you in the other video. And you see I'm having, it's quite weak with the Push. Actually, it's not on Push. That's Push. Sorry about that. You see, it's quite weak with the Push. Now, down here, you've got the size and the pressure. Um, I'm sure, where is it? Oh, that's that uh, reconstruct I was talking about in the other video. You see, you can sort of undo it, put it all back. The one I quite liked was the twirl, because you can come in here and just keep it pressed, and you can twirl that round. Isn't that cool? So you can make a complete new shape. And you can twirl the other way. Um, pinch would pinch it in, I'll show you that one, Oop, there you go, pinch it in, it's not really uh, showing it there is it, expand, it's quite good, make things bigger, <laughs> and um, I think that was the one I was looking for, oh no that's just changing, yeah the strength, so you can change the strength, take that down, let's go to this one again. Oh, okay, it didn't really make much difference, did it? I was back up to 100%, that's why. Bring it down. Oh, all right. Whatever. But, obviously the bigger the brush, if I take the size up. Look at that, it just moves the whole thing. It's a bit, a bit like Photoshop uses this, doesn't it? I quite like it. I like it small because you can do these sort of shapes and they look quite smooth. And you can even curve them like that. <laughs> like a little star. So it really is a case of just playing playing around with it. Um I can't remember if noise was in the old in the old version or not, because I don't I never used it. Uh, curves is really interesting. Uh, it's for colour, so you can play around with the colour. But I need to put some colour in there, really. Let me just uh, reset. Let's put some colour in there somewhere. Oh, gold. Right. Um, go into curves, and we can play around with the colour. Now, when I used to do photography, we used to really play with the. <clears throat> it's called an S curve where you'd bring that down like that and you'd play play around really until you get like a sort of S curve and it works pretty well you can sort of balance your colours out really really nice Ooh. 
Yeah, we used to do that with the, in the photography. Um, balance the colours out like that. But obviously if you had more colour you would notice it a bit more. Um, but you get the idea. If I put, um, let's put a bright yellow in there. In there. Go back into curves. Pull the centre down. I think I used to do it about there actually. Pull that down. And then bring that one up. So you're sort of doing an S curve. And it tends to balance the colours. So the blacks is black, the whites is white. And um, you get like a balanced colour. Um, it used to work in the photography. I haven't yet to use that curves on a really colourful picture. But the principle is the same of balancing the colours. So you've still got your mauves and yellow. But it make it just sort of balances it by doing the, the S curve through the colour. That's how we used to do it in in the photos. But yeah, you get the idea. So this, so it's got a lot of a lot of tools here which you can play with. Um, it's really down to I suppose imagination and how far you want to go with it. I just like using it for the models really, but. I mean, it's got some really good um, prospects because you can... Let me just clear all this. If you wanted to do... <laughs> if you wanted to do... Um, let's put that back on. Go into um, split screen. Turn that off. If you wanted to do like a portrait -y thing, you could do like a face. <laughs> Big eyes. Uh news you get the idea so it's really down to your imagination really on how you use it <laughs> so you could have quite a symmetrical face couldn't you um and like you said you can move that line around as well so you can you know use it in different places different areas and stuff so um yeah make him look like an alien then it doesn't matter what he looks like does it <laughs> yeah so it's got a lot of potential there now i'm going to be making some videos using obviously the, the new updated version of procreate i'm also um i'm setting up a class for um what's called trace art for people like me that can't really draw i, I can do mondals and zentangles and but I do like drawing as well and I'll show you an example of a trace art there's this one there and that's the original picture there so all what I've done is I've basically got the shape of what I want and then what I've done is I've turned that off and then I've painted painted it in so it's not exactly the same even the heights varies because of the way the paint went on um, and the bushes of course and I left out the rocks but the good thing about trace art oh I did the clouds as well the good thing about doing trace art is that you can remove things from the picture and put things into the picture so you've got that scope and I, I, I'm not an artist but I love to go out and draw this picture was, was taken f I didn't take this picture um, it's taken from a royalty free site just for just mucking about but I'm going to show you how to go out and about and do art out, out. So you, I don't know, go to a, a nice place and you can take a picture and paint it. So that's that's what's coming up. Anyway, I hope you found all that helpful. And uh, right, 10 updates, blimey. Talk again soon. Take care.